Do you guys remember Flappy Bird? You like jump through pipes and you get points the longer you go. I don't even know what genre this is, but I mean, Flappy Bird was really late to this one. They had rockets and all these other games beforehand. When I was growing up, it was like the helicopter game. But anyway, it's like a classic arcade game. It's really easy to make. Here's how you can do it in Unity. So I have a empty 2D Unity project here, and all I have is just some sprites we're gonna be using here. And that's actually where we're gonna start. Let's set up our scene. So in Microsoft Paint, I just created this background quick. It's gonna be static. I know what you're thinking. And yes, you can buy this background picture. Okay, so this is just a PNG I made in Paint. It's 1920 by 1080 if you care. And I'm throwing it out of the scene. So if we click on our background, what we want to do is actually add a collider to the floor part. So we can hit Add Component, and you can type in Box Collider. And we'll click on Box Collider 2D. At this point, we want to hit the Edit Collider button. And you'll see these green lines appear on the scene view. And we can just simply drag down from the top middle and land around the bottom. This way, there's now a collision being detected on the floor. And then also, since this is the background, we want this behind everything else. We could go ahead and create a sorting layer if we wanted to. But I'm just going to leave it at default, and we'll keep it simple, and we'll just set it to negative one for now. So it's going to be behind everything else. We can now drag in our player. And, you know, Flappy Bird's good and all, but you know what's better than birds? Walrus. So here we go. Introducing my walrus character. Don't laugh, I tried really hard on this. I'm gonna actually increase his scale to two in the Y and two in the X, just so he's a little bigger. And I'm gonna zero out his position and just move him to the left, maybe negative seven or so. That's probably about right. In the game view, he's just like against the side of the screen. So it depends on like what aspect ratio you're using, but this works for me. And now finally, we gotta actually make our obstacles. So I have this transparent pipe here and I'm just gonna expand this out a little bit, maybe increase that by two and two. We can position it in the middle, and then I'm just gonna drag it down in the Y axis so it's below the screen a little bit, maybe like about there. And we'll go ahead and add a Box Collider 2D to this one as well. Now you'll notice it's actually too big for the sprite itself. That's just because of my particular image, but we'll go to Edit Collider, and we just want it to be right on the edge of the sprite. I won't worry about the parts sticking out a little bit. I'll just go for the main pipe. So if you hit this thing, it's gonna cause a game over. And so now in the hierarchy, I'll actually right click and create an empty game object and I'll call this obstacle. And then we can just click and drag our pipe underneath the obstacle and you'll see it becomes a nested game object. And then clicking on our pipe, we can now press Control D to duplicate it. So without doing anything else, we can simply go to the rotation and set the Z axis to 180 to rotate it upside down and get it to a point where you feel like you have a big enough gap in between because the gap size is not gonna change in this method. I'm then gonna right click on obstacle and create one more empty game object and call this score trigger. And then right underneath the name field, there's this tag dropdown. Let's expand that and go to add tag. We can hit the plus and create a new one, which I will also call score trigger. And then on score trigger, we can assign the tag of score trigger. We can go to add component and add our final box collider 2D. And for this one, we just kind of want to position it in between the two pipes. So I'll just place it in between the pipes like this. And then this is very important. Make sure is trigger is set to true on the box collider 2D. Let's actually click back on our player, which is for me, this walrus. And we will add a circle collider 2D. Uh, this works for my character because he's circular. If you had a different shape, you know, maybe a box collider 2D is better for you. And then we can also add a rigid body 2D. And I'm just gonna increase the gravity scale on this to two. Last thing we should just get out of the way up front is our score text. We can actually right click in our hierarchy, go down to UI and select text, text mesh pro. It'll ask you if you wanna import the text mesh pro essentials, which we do. So hit import. And then on this new text object, we can call this score text. You can click on this anchor box in the top left and we'll anchor it at the top center. We can now zero out the X position and do something like negative 100 or something. And in terms of creating objects, that's everything we're gonna need for right now. So I'm actually gonna click on our obstacle parent object and just drag it over to the right off screen. Then we can go to add component, new script, and I'll type in obstacle movement and we'll open this up in Visual Studio. This script's gonna be really simple. We can start off by getting rid of start. We don't need it. And then in terms of variables, all we really need to capture here is a move speed. So for simplicity, we could say public float move speed. And I'll default this to something like 1F. And then instead of calling void update, what we want to say is void fixed update. Otherwise, the movement of these pipes will be dependent on how fast your processor is. And what we can say is we want the transform dot position. So the pipe or obstacles position to equal vector two dot linear interpolate the transform dot position with a new vector two in the transform dot position dot X minus the move speed 
and the transform that position at y. And at the end, we have to specify how fast we want to interpolate. So we'll say 0.1f. And if we play this, we'll see that our pipes actually slowly drift to the left. We can actually click on our obstacle now and we'll drag it into the assets folder, which creates a prefab. And now we can just delete our obstacle in the scene and we want to have a way of generating these. So let's right click on our hierarchy once more and create an empty game object. And we'll call this obstacle manager. We'll hit add component. We'll go to new script and we'll type obstacle generator. First and foremost, we need a reference to that obstacle prefab we just made. So you can say public game object. I'll call it pipe prefab. And now this is optional, but if you want to tweak how fast you want these obstacles to be generated, we can have a field for that. So we can say public in generation rate, and we could default this to something like 100. And then we can have a private in timer, and we could also default this to 100. And then we just need a way of tracking the elapsed time. We can go ahead and use an int or float, it doesn't matter, but I'll say private int timer. We don't need a start method for this one either. And we also wanna update this from update to fix update, just like before. And in here, what we wanna do is increment our timer. So we'll say timer plus plus. And we'll say if our timer is greater than or equal to our generation rate, well then we wanna say timer is equal to zero, so it resets. And then we wanna instantiate a new prefab. So we'll say game object new obstacle is equal to instantiate the pipe prefab. And now we have to give it a position where we want to instantiate this thing. So we'll say new vector two, and we'll say pipe prefab dot transform dot position dot X. So it'll be in the prefab's default X position, which was off screen. And then we'll say pipe prefab dot transform dot position dot Y. And here what we want to do is move the pipes up and down so that there's variation between each generated pipe. Uh, and it's really easy to do that. So we can say plus random dot range and then we'll say negative 2f to 2f. And then we need to give it a rotation as well. So we can say pipe prefab dot transform dot rotation. And just for efficiency sake, we wanna destroy these things once they're off screen. So what we could say is destroy new obstacle after 5f, which is five seconds. So on our obstacle manager, we now have this pipe prefab, which in our case could also be called the obstacle prefab. And we can drag this obstacle in. And if we hit play, you'll notice that it's generating pipes every few seconds. Cool. So the last thing we need to do is create our player controller. So on our walrus, just like before, we'll go to add component, new script, and I'll call this player movement. And this is the most complicated one, but it's actually pretty straightforward. First and foremost, we need a reference to our rigid body 2D. So I'll say public rigid body 2D, call it RB. We want a reference to our score too, and this could be done in a separate place, but I'll keep it simple and add it in the player movement for now. But in order to get a reference to our TextMesh Pro object, we need to add a using statement to include the library. So at the top, we'll say using TM Pro, which is TextMesh Pro. And so now if you write public TextMesh Pro UGUI, that's the actual text component used with TextMesh Pro. We'll just call this score text. And then finally, in terms of things we want to be able to tweak, we'll say public float jump amount, and we'll default this to something like eight. And then finally, we just need a private int score. So once again, we don't need start, but we do want to leave update as update and not fix update this time. And in here, what we want to do is check for us pressing the space bar or any key you really want. But I'm just going to say if input.getKey down, and then we can open it and say keycode.space. Then we want to set the rigid body velocity equal to a new vector two, where we don't move in the X position but we wanna move in the Y position our jump amount. And that's it, that should handle all the jumping. We wanna increment the score when we go through the pipes. So what we can say is on trigger exit 2D, which is a built-in Unity event. We can say if the collision dot game object dot compare tag is score trigger, which we set up before. So if the trigger that we're exiting is the score trigger, we wanna increment our score, so score plus plus, and then we wanna set the score text dot text equal to score dot to string. So we're basically updating the score text on the screen. And then finally, just to reset the game, what we can say is on collision enter 2D. This is either gonna be the pipes or the floor. And in both cases, what we wanna do is reset the scene. So we can actually go to the top and add another using statement and say using unity engine dot scene management. And then back in on collision enter 2D, we can say scene manager dot load scene and then we'll use the scene manager again to get the active scene and get the build index. And all this is doing, if this is confusing to you, is basically reloading the current scene that we're on. And so now, and so now on our player, we can drag in our rigid body 2D into the RB slot. 
we can drag our score text into the score text slot. And if we play the game, you can now press space, to jump up and down. You can go through these pipes. The score will increment as you do. And if you collide with something, it will reset the game. And the coolest part of this game is if you press space really fast, it'll end up telling you to subscribe. Thank you.